Beloved brothers and sisters of one human family gathered in Tokyo, please accept the Sikh greetings. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. We are very happy to be able to join you virtually from the UK in mind, heart and spirit in the search to establish sustainable peace inside and around us, knowing it is needed in our world more than ever before. The contemporary world scenario is sad and lamentable because of, as stated in the six scriptures, the raging fires of vices, the famine of truth and spread of falsehood, and ultimately our disconnect with God. However, we all want peace, which demands a collective transformation, which can only come about through change within our own individual selves. The key to bringing about change within ourselves requires addressing our own mind. Our mind is a very powerful entity. The mind entertains thoughts, which lead to actions that become deeds. We humans, as the most evolved of 8.4 million life species, are endowed with reasoning power and choice. We have a choice to entertain good thoughts, or wicked and evil thoughts, but exercising this choice needs guidance and help from gurus, spiritual teachers, and our revered scriptures. We need to essentially connect up with the higher power above us. Those who believe in God, of course, consider him as the highest power. Quoting the UNESCO preamble statement, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. This wise statement of 1944 demands nations to address our minds which we have neglected to do so far. In the pursuit of peace thus, let us be conscious of the mindsets that guide us. As we commit in our own ways to our peace building practices, please Allow me to reflect on some advice given by the Sikh Gurus. The mind should immerse in God like a fish immersed in water. Disassociated and disconnected from God, who is the giver of all peace and comfort, salvation and emancipation, the mind gets engrossed in sin, corruption, greed, exploitation, egotistical pride. It does not shed its evil-mindedness pride and arrogance. The mind should enshrine within it devotion of God. It has to seek God's sanctuary to obtain eternal peace. The mind must dispel its pride and arrogance to seek peace through love and forgiveness. Please allow me to elaborate with six short points. Accepting diversity in the quest for peace is paramount. No one size fits all. Through daily spiritual practice, we should each approach peace from our own religious contexts and genuine commitments, be it be the Abrahamic or Dharmic faith or indigenous spiritual traditions. Intra and interfaith peace is a prerequisite for peace in our world. Without peace within and amongst religions, there can be no peace in the world. If the transformative value of spiritual wisdom is to be heard and respected by the secular and the scientific world for them to adopt and guide them, then faiths must demonstrate peace both within and between themselves. This is a priority. Redefining peace as attuning to divine harmony. The very essence of all religions is peace. Each tradition in its own way connects us to that resonance and living energy which emanates from God, God's eternal wisdom and presence. Some call this the word of God. As six, we define this power or energy as Nam, which permeates all creation and harmony. And of course, in harmony, there is peace. Being genuine and honest and relinquishing arrogance and hypocrisy. The Sikh Gurus respected all faiths. Moreover, they invited and challenged people of different faiths 
to dive deep within their own genuine faith teachings and to reflect and put them into daily practice without hypocrisy, creating foundations and conditions for collective peace building. Peace building for the Sikh Gurus was more than a personal search for serenity in isolation from others. They look to establish conducive foundations and conditions for both internal and external peace. We need to continue to work together to look at how to develop social policy and infrastructure to build cultures of genuine peace. Is it not high time, I ask, for governments to establish ministries, especially for peace building? Should we not find means to better support parents, families and local communities on the ground to build peace in the face of many grassroots challenges? Safety, security and prevent strategy. Rather than amassing weapons of mass destruction, surely we want peace. Surely if we want peace, we must prepare for peace. The real strategy, however, is not to create enemies in the first place. Our fifth Guru, Guru Arjan Dev Ji stated, For me, there is no enemy. Nobody is a stranger or alien. They are all mine as sparks from the same divine source. Very much, we very much welcome this series of peace roundtables starting here in Tokyo. As stated in the preamble of the Peace Charter for Forgiveness and Reconciliation, which many of you have contributed to the process of forgiving in the role of reconciliation is highly valued and striven for as part of our collective efforts to seek justice, harmony and sustainable peace. Thank you.